tropical depression. Marco making landfall last night. The storm, which was thankfully downgraded from a tropical storm to a depression, is still bringing heavy rain and strong winds to the regions. Now, all eyes turn to tropical storm Laura, which is expected to strengthen into a major hurricane in the coming days. Let's get the very latest on the strength and the track with NBC meteorologist Bill Karens. Bill, I love you, buddy. I love talking to you, but when I know when I see you, it's because there's a big storm on the way. How big could Laura get? Um, Brian, this is our 2020 nightmare. I mean, we have the potential major hurricane landfall in the midst of a pandemic. That's uh, what we feared uh, going into this hurricane season, and now it looks like it's going to be a reality. Just got the new information in from the Hurricane Center, so let me give you that and show you if, what has changed. So the storm has come off of Cuba. It is now over the warm waters of the Gulf. All the bright red on here are thunderstorms near the center. It's trying to reorganize, and it looks like that's happening. So then it will have 48 hours, a little under that, to intensify and how strong can it get in the next 48 hours will depend on the destruction and devastation on the upper Texas coastline and in Louisiana. Right now, it's barely under hurricane strength. It should become a hurricane later on today, possibly this afternoon. And look at this new forecast from the Hurricane Center. I paused it here Thursday, 1 a.m. That's roughly about the window for landfall. Uh, so, again, a little under 48 hours from now. But the Hurricane Center does bring it up to a Category 3 hurricane with 115 mile per hour sustained winds, gusts higher than that. That would be a devastating blow for the upper Texas coastline and portions of Louisiana. We still have Houston dangerously close to that cone, including the Galveston area. But Beaumont, Port Arthur, Lake Charles, you know, this is oil country, right? I mean, they've already evacuated a lot of the platforms. They're going to have to shut down some of the, all the refineries in those areas also. And then after that, the storm moves to the north, and it's just a big rain event from areas Little Rock, Memphis, across Tennessee and Kentucky. So how much uncertainty is there? Our European computer model, which is typically our most reliable, look what this one does. It's to the left of the Hurricane Center's forecast and takes the storm almost over the top of Galveston and in towards Houston and in between Houston and Beaumont. So, Brian, you can see how serious of the situation that we have. We're going to have a rapidly strengthening hurricane approaching land. So we're going to have mass evacuations beginning today and continuing tomorrow. Yeah, amazing, Bill. And as we pointed out yesterday, 40, I don't know if we have our map still up and available, 44% of all U.S. oil and gas refining capacity is basically in that colored model that you've got there. Somewhere in yeah. that eye and that cone, the yellow, the green, is all that capacity. About 2 million barrels of oil production off our offline right now. Pretty much all of the offshore rigs. Of course, you got to get the women and men off those rigs before those storms come in. We are watching oil. It's not moving, by the way, Bill, only because... People are now expected to drive so much less because the storm. Talk to us about the, the storm surge. I got an email from a big oil company, this, their internal projections. They talked about Ike and Rita. If we remember those storms, twin storms as well. A lot of real concern, given the rain on the ground from Marco already, that we could see a tidal surge of 11 to 15 feet from Laura. So this is the current predictions, and uh, you know we'll wait and see. If the storm gets stronger than this, it could even be more. So here's the landfall position from the Hurricane Center, almost right into the Beaumont, Port Arthur area. And then to the right of that, 7 to 11-foot storm surge. And we peaked with Rita at 15 feet, and that was like one of the worst ever for this region. Ike, well, the Boulevard Peninsula, was a little more to the left of this towards Galveston, and that was a storm surge that was also around 10 to 15 feet. And those just wiped out houses and homes. Even things on pillars got destroyed with the wave action and the water height. So, yeah, and this is a devastating storm surge for this region, Brian. Um, you know, this area is so vulnerable. It's all swampy. It's lowland. I mean, we'll have water going inland all the way up to I-10 in some areas. So, uh, yeah, this is going to be a devastating storm. And in the midst of COVID and everything else going on, uh, you know, I feel for the people in this region. Yeah, they just keep getting, you know, hit. But they are so tough. They keep getting punched in the gut and they keep uh, rebuilding and, and coming back up. Bill Karens, scary stuff there, but we always appreciate your context. Bill, thank you very much.